Well, I welcome you all to La Comunidad and to our artist talk. Today we have the wonderful Joy Rocha with us. Um, I know, once again, just like Andy, he doesn't need an introduction. He will cover it all as he enjoys and we look at his artwork. Um, at the end, we'll have time for questions and I'll give you a little bit more information about what else you can expect throughout the duration of this exhibit. On that note, I give you Mr. Joey. All right, thank you. I'm not much of a, a speaker, but once I get into it a little more, it's mainly this, you know, like what we do as artists. But uh, thanks to the library and the Sabatini Gallery for giving us this opportunity to show our works here and for the community. <clears throat> I think uh, <clears throat> shows like this, um, this is how we get our cultures together instead of other things that are on the outside. This is the inside. This is how we see how our cultures are through the art of the different cultures. Um, I go through my title, which some of my stuff is uh, in my brother's. Uh, we started out as Rocha Artista. And it's, it was just a group of like my two brothers and now my nephews, but we all tend to <clears throat> do different shows or keep our lifestyle in with art and in our families and pretty much whatever we do. And um, I pretty much came up with the thing of three points that I go by, which is faith, family, and art which the first is faith, because <clears throat> you thank God for the gift that he's given you, for the, the talent that anybody has, you know, whether it's cooking, sewing, whatever. I mean, there's talent in speaking, which I don't know. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can express yourself. But um, sometimes it's hard to pick up because some people don't find the time to look for them from when they're here to when they're all grown up. Um, the inspiration for me and my artwork comes through, I say a gift, like I said, from, from God. And I think that everybody should, um, they have something. I think everybody has something that they have to offer. And, and that's another way how our cultures come together too, by positive, uh, positive thinking. Uh, the family, which is, uh, like I said, my family's always been strong in art, and also my family outside of my brothers and sisters, because I married into a family that was already generating art to, uh, and Valdivia, Uncle Koki, and Stephanie, and the Valdivias, and here I was, so we can collaborate on artwork, and it goes on, so it's just not my family, and then the different shows we've had in the Fiesta, we featured a few families, the Chavez family, the Valdivias, and the Roaches, and these are families that are music-wise, cooking, art, everything. They're just, you know, families that are, are bound like that and they're creative and they just put their works together so good. Um, the art is, uh, it, it, it's really satisfying when you're working on a painting when you start with a certain subject, like for instance this one. You start with a certain subject, my way of painting, and that's all I put on it. Because I seen this picture of this sharecropper lady, and I said, man, I love that picture. But I was getting away from realism, which I started out with. But I felt like that uh, I was going someplace else. And, and I was thinking of a whole lot of different ways to express myself in my art. So through this, I just went, instead of painting her more realistic, I wanted it in this nice lavender. And then I sat back and I looked at it for 
Oh, it could be from an hour, then I leave, I come back another hour and look at it, and I just look and see what else I could put it, and then all of a sudden something comes to me. And I throw music on. I like uh, Thomas Newman, the, the conductor, Thomas Newman. And I listen to his music, and I come up with these things. Well, what I believe in a lot of my paintings is what I see myself from uh, my own point of view and what I'm feeling. And this necessarily doesn't mean it's, it, it's you know, for everyone, but to an artist, it's like, you know, um, I really don't know. Um, I think at this point, I'm just trying to do what I want to do from here instead of in school and stuff, I was doing it from here. And I need to start expressing in my paintings different things, what I'm feeling. So that's why I painted this one, and it's called the. Um, the keeper of the plant, and if you look close, there's it's like a plant. But the colors, I didn't know what I wanted to do with this, so I wanted a green to pop that lavender out, and then different things going on inside. But then I thought of what can I put in here, and I I put about three little babies laying down. My wife said, why don't you put more? Why don't you put more babies? So I put a total of 10 in there, but you have to look at it. They're laying on the, on the pads, the pills. But she's like the one that, that like takes care of them, you know, more or less. And this is when I started getting more or less into this type of art from realism. A realism, I do a lot of religious paintings of Christ and the Virgin Mary and different pictures and, and which I still love doing. But there was things that I wanted to express through a different way of doing my art. Um, it's like a journey. When you start it and you're so anxious to get back to it and then when you're working on it, everything's like shut out. I mean, you can hear the music, but that's all you hear. I mean, you're just right there doing your painting and you're just working on it. And, and it can be bad at some times because, you know, you, you miss things like you're late on the dinner or something or something <laughs> comes up or, or it's time to go and we got to go. And, you know, that's where you can run into problems. But it's, a, it's a journey that I take with each painting that I do because now I think each painting means uh, something for me. This one over here was one of my latest ones and what it is is just something that I just came up with like an abstract of the uh, the eagle, the Mexican eagle and the American eagle and then kind of like just an abstract of uh, it's called Culture 11. That's just what I titled it. And I, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just something I wanted to paint and something different where it's um, uh, you critique it and you see what you think and whatever. Because critiquing a picture at the Fiesta one time, I painted a picture of um, uh, the gospel according to the, the four apostles, John, Mark, Luke, and uh, uh, Paul and these uh, women from K State were looking at it and they were observing it and and what it is is a cross and an oval and on the outside I got like it's it's pretty it's pretty dark where these deals are trying to get in inside the oval but they they can't and one lady came up she and she was looking at it and she was going oh, I don't know if I like this this picture. But she stood in front of it for like 15 or 20 minutes just going like this. <laughs> to me, I like that more than somebody come up saying, oh man, this is a good, because she was looking at it and what she's doing is looking at something that she's trying to understand. She's trying to look at something that, that by critiquing 
a, a picture and looking at it, it's, it's your own imagination what you're coming up with, what the what we're supposed to provide for you, some artists, like they'll 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 paint oh fantastic, fantastic stuff. I mean my brother, uh, Uncle Koki, they I mean they produce fantastic works, you know, and and my brother once told me, he said, you know what? I think that abstract stuff, I think that's your nick because you, you, you tell stories in those. And this one here, my wife was kind of coaching me on this one too, because <laughs> this one's called Visions for Van Gogh, which I, I love Vincent Van Gogh. And it's a picture of him right here in white painting near the shoreline and the trees and the sunflowers, which he loved. And then a family, but it looks like they're uh, they're formed out of the sky. The dog, the little girl, the man and the wife and the son. But and it, it was very pleasant to me to do something like this because I was getting back into realism a little bit by doing this, but it's still surrealism, abstract if you want to call it. So I had to do something to get back into my style what I was doing. So I put some, you know, for instance, the people in there and the different things that I'm doing in there. But it, it, you can get taken away a little bit, but then I, I have to come back to what I'm doing at this stage in my life. So. I feel it's important for what I'm doing now. Um, and then some of the paintings that I did, um, like the farm workers, which I did in my early year, years, I had a lot of uh, 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 talk about those and because uh, I felt like at that time, this was back in the 80s and the 90s, that the farm workers were a very important part of our society, and um, I've always been a, a fan of Cesar Chavez and uh, Dolores Huerta. So uh, I met her at a show once. I was doing a show in Wichita, and uh, me and my wife were getting ready to set some paintings out out in front. I was setting them on an easel. A little lady was standing right next to me, and she was looking at them, going mm, like this. And I kept looking at her. I said, "Are you Dolores Huerta?" And she goes, "Yeah." <laughs> And she goes, oh, I like these. And, and you know, it, just just meeting her was something that kind of put a final phase to that type of painting for me. Because I've always wanted to meet one of them. And I, I knew I was never going to meet uh, Cesar Chavez, but, but I met her and me and my wife spent some time with her, and, and uh, it was really nice. I, and, uh, I talked to her how I felt about my artwork with this, but it's a way I can contribute to let people see what an artist feels about what they're doing in the fields, and how they work, and how they're out there all day. And uh, as a matter of fact, my uncle took me to a, a quinceañera, in Bakersfield, California, and uh, they were working the fields, and it was 10 o'clock at night, and he goes, come on, we're going to go down to uh, uh, my uncle's house. And we went over there, and, it, and it's in a place called Arvin, in the valley there, and they were all walking in from, uh, getting out of their cars from the field, and they, and they washed up, and then they started, they had already had the pig going, you know, the pig was already moving, they, got, they were getting it going, but after working all day in those fields and uh, doing all that, they, they were just so happy. And then they'd have to wake up in the morning like at five and get ready for another day. So that there started it 10 years later after the Lord of Sweat I met her, that kind of put it in, I mean, not put it in, I'd still speak about them in the paintings when I need them for shows or different things, because that's a, an important part of my art upbringing, is uh, to show um, p 
people how I felt about what they went through. I mean, I did a show for the EPA in Kansas City one time because I painted this one where they had the mask on just like some of us <laughs> have now and for pesticides. And uh, that show went over real good, but they wanted to see, you know, because the pesticides, they were bad back then. And now they're, I guess, the, and I painted this one back in 80, 86. But um, um, most of the paintings I did with uh, them now are, and people said, why don't you do more of those? But I think it's, it, it was time for me to move on. And what it is, art's like a journey. It, it takes you on a journey through different phases, through different uh, aspects in your life, and people around you, and what's going on around you, and uh, um, you know, just different things. And also when I'm painting, I also write things down, because I like to write too. And um, um, there are different things that I've written that uh, I'm, I'm getting right now into the thing where I'm having them looked at and maybe going to put them all together. And I got one on the farm workers and, and di different things that I'm coming up with. But each painting that I have in here has a story to it. There's a little bit on it, but there's a lot more in it what I was thinking about, but that would take a, a while. There's always the subject. Uh, in the in the picture is the whole picture that's the way i look at things the subject in one is not is one but it's everything it's it's the whole you're looking at um, the colors and the style kind of dictates the colors that i use in my paintings whatever style i'm doing well naturally i'd use those in this one this one really got me going because then I used two colors that were, you know, different. They, um, this green lime green popped the lavender out, so I wanted something like that. And this one is uh, the sunflowers and the pink, but uh, this is one, there are certain pieces that, uh, you know, you get help on with inspiration in your life pretty much. Uh, help me with that one on, on that one. Um, a lot of the subjects I just draw in the middle and I just leave it like that. I have no idea what's going to go on around them. I, I, I have no idea. I draw the subject in the middle and then I look at it. Sometimes, one time I took almost three days looking at coming in the room just looking at it listen to music, but then I'd walk out I still don't know what I want to do with it. It's just something that I'm observing. Then I start to see things and things start coming in and it fills it. It's like, like a Christmas tree when you're doing it. You're putting all the deals on there and you're going, what, what kind of garland we want to use with those lights? Well, that's the same thing I'm doing with this. What kind of colors? What, what's this? And it's all going on. Um, The passion for art is, uh, I think, is, is expressing what you feel. In the times we live in now, like, and I do change with the times with things that are going on in, in my writings and stuff and, and what, but uh, um, it, it's a good way to release some things instead of you know, going out and making a, a fuss and this and that. I think people know other folks when you look at their artwork or you look at the way, uh, how they cook or how they sew. They take a lot of, uh, uh, they take a lot of, uh, I don't want to say pride, but they take a lot of uh, what God has given them to do that right because man uh, I learned how to cook a little more the, the kind of the make when I learned from uh, my wife's mother and it was like art too 
making chorizo and different things and then mixing it and all this stuff and it got exciting just like this. It, 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 it's exciting to cook and to write and to paint and you know there were so many things that, that uh, I wanted to do and but uh, uh, sometimes you need to do them a little earlier because I started a lot of this a little late and uh, uh, it can, it can be, a, a, believe me, artists can get wrapped up in something and it can take them away from family a little bit and this and that. And that's one of the faults that, you know, I have. But um, hopefully one of these days, this, uh, I told my wife, I said, one of these days, hopefully, you know, when I'm gone, these paintings and whatever's left are yours and the kids. Do what you will with them and stuff. So, you know, and and but they always say that an artist uh, really isn't looked at until the day he's gone, and then they remember his works, and then they flock to his Michelangelo, Van Gogh. I mean, that's why I love Van Gogh so much. He hardly sold any works in his lifetime. He sold some from his brother selling his works, and then after time went on, his style developed, and people seen that his brush strokes, the thick paint he used in his pictures. I mean, and I, I tell my brother Pat, who my brother Pat's a professional painter, and I tell him, you know, the, re the reason why I like Van Gogh, because I can see his brush strokes. I can see the paint, instead of fine little stuff, and this and that, and I, I think that's great, but I, I, w I was doing that when I first started out. I wanted to get fine and do all this stuff too, but I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't me. And I, I, I just kind of like to see the brush strokes, the thick paint on the canvas. Um, and then the mentors you have throughout your life that have helped you along the way, whether they knew anything about art or, or didn't. That's also a big aspect of my paintings too, because a lot of this comes from behind me, whether it was teachers when I was in the third grade that said, you're not going nowhere fast, because I wasn't all that well in school, you know. And, uh, uh, but you know what? That kind of inspiration back then motivated me more because when people told me that art's not going to get you, you know, you, you're good at it, but it's not going to get you anywhere because the computers, you got to get in with the computers, you got to get with the world, you got to stay up with things and stuff. But I've always been the one to be a traditionalist and, and, uh, and, and stay with what I believe in and, and what they they were scolding me about when I was younger, you know, it actually helped me. Just like I was telling you about the lady that critiqued that picture. Well, by them doing that to me, it helped me. And, uh, you know, a lot of this work is uh, because of it. And because of the mentors I've had in life and uh, people that have showed me the way. Um, We, we look at art like it's a, uh, to anyone else, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to explain because when you look at all the pieces that are in here, the different pieces and what they do and, and the different artists, the colors they use and, and uh, it, it's a story, it's all a book and you, don't, you really don't need words, it, it, it's meant to look at. You know, like the Sistine Chapel, like uh, um, different things like that. I have been painting a lot of things that are kind of dark right now. And, but those are my feelings right now as, as an artist. And they're things that instead of me writing about them, which the things that I write are, are different. But the things that I paint, all of a sudden they come to me, and I just do the one subject, then I go from there. And uh, 
there are no boundaries. I mean, artwork, but it has to be. Um, there's a lot of freedom in art, but a lot of art is is. Uh, I still think the good art is the ones that you can enjoy. Now, there's some things out there that you say that doesn't even look like artwork. I mean, uh, take for instance a uh, a Jackson Pollock work, if you've ever heard of the artist Jackson Pollock. His paint would be all over the place and he'd scatter paint and some people say, well anybody can do that. I mean, it's like, but to an artist, anybody can't, know, uh, can't do that because it was certain technique that he had inside the colors that he used and what he did it with, what he was trying to express. He started out as a realist too and a lot of his pictures are really nice. But he didn't feel like he was making it in that too. It was like a release. He needed a release to really feel the... Because you can get frustrated because it's the same thing all the time. Um, I'm one of those ones and my brothers are too. They're we're really uh, moody about things and about our artwork. We get really moody about it. But, but we all paint what we want and um, uh, the differences we have is uh, and when we get together um, that's all we talk about is artworks and, and I used to go to galleries in Kansas City and, and different places where, sh where shows were going on and different things and, and then uh, you know uh, what helped me also was the Fiesta art show for as long as we did it that helped me too because I got to meet other artists that were painting things and man, their works were, I mean, you know, and I love working with other artists. I love working with other art because it's, uh, it, uh, it doesn't, it, 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 it gives me uh, a, a inspiration looking at their works. Yeah, I know what they want to do, and they explain it, and this and that. So it, it, it's really good like that. It, it, it's you know, it's kind of like a clique. We got our cliques, different artists that work, and uh, and we all got our different ways, and we back them a hundred percent. Some of them on their works. My works, um, um, well, ever since I first started, I'm, my uh, my religious paintings my the farm worker pictures, those are the ones, uh, even though I'm doing my religious paintings still now, but they're abstracts now. They're in a different uh, way of seeing it. And I should have bring the one, but it, it, it's one that's about this size, and it has the cross, but on the cross is Christ in the back in gold, but I got something outlining on the cross that's, uh, you know, kind of, um, that you can't really speak to, speak to them like you want. It's kind of like, if you're Catholic, it's kind of like a confessional when you're in a confessional and you're speaking to the priest, there's a cloth there. Well, this is what this painting's like, and in the background, I got like windows of fire. And because I really, it, it's kind of see, just like I said, I'm expressing myself that sometimes I can't really speak to them and it's like it's not getting through. So I put it on canvas and I do, you know, the things like that and, and uh, other pieces that I'm working on. But all the pieces in here right now are a family like my one, The Dilemma, I painted that, oh, I don't know how long ago, over 20-some years ago, but uh, that was my mother-in-law's favorite painting. She'd get up at night. I, I work at night. I work late at night sometimes till 2, 3 in the morning. And she used to get up and watch me as I was painting on it. She goes, this is going to be a good one. And the one of the dilemmas about the two kids were the angels has the hands on the head because she always says the children are the are the ones we need to take care of. So that one there, the one of the 
with the Flint Hills, the Kansas immigrants, and then um, the other one of the dancers in the fields. Now, the other one I almost didn't get. My my daughter-in-law, who my my son got that from my daughter my daughter-in-law. She wasn't even going to let me use that in the show because she said, oh, I can't. And there was one piece I wanted in here, and, and he, uh, he said he, he, he didn't think he could be without, you know, in, in his house. And I said, well, that's fine. But these were pieces I thought that would be good for the show. Well, she finally uh, let me use the one. But it's of the dancers. It's an abstract one of the two long stick dancers. They're dancing in and, but what it shows is, is the feelings that people have when her hand is on uh, his heart. And then, you know, just certain things. And, you know, you, you, you may show things in the thing, but you actually sometimes don't do them. But you show them in, in a picture of yours. And your, your feelings sometimes come out in the picture. And then the colors, well, you got to have the colors. So I just start using all these bright pinks and different things, which a lot of, in San Antonio, there's a lot of pinks and lavenders and greens and oranges and, and uh, uh, different things like uh, we're going to attempt to go to uh, San Antonio in the late part of October for the Andrea de los Muertos, the, big banquet they have there at the Hemisphere Arena. We went two years ago and their paper mache uh, uh, statues that they make of the different things are higher than the ceiling. They're, they're, uh, some of them are 20 feet big. They're gigantic all over and then the, it's, just a, it's just really nice. Um, there were a lot of other paintings I did from the Mexican Revolution, too, and those were earlier. Those were oils. Now I enjoy doing those, but but oils, I don't I don't work in oils no more. Um, uh, I did do one of an oil for my mom of Christ, and gave it to her for her birthday, and that was the last oil I did. And that was over two two or three years ago. But acrylics, I'm happy with them now because I don't have to, uh, I like to get done with the painting too. I like to move on it. I like to keep going on it. The only thing that holds me back is my subjects, what I'm thinking about, what I want to put in there. So the music helps me along the way when I put the music on and I'm painting and, and uh, the other different things that uh, motivate me. Um, there is one thing about the, the journey that I've taken with all of this is starting from the day I was in school and, and uh, like I said, uh, mentors along the way, people that support you, that um, they, they may know what you're about, but they appreciate what you do. And I think that in, in our society today, that we can all kind of get along with even though we're on a, a seat, things different, we can still, you know, have things that, that you can either say, or you can paint, or you can write about. And I think that's good. I mean, because uh, either way, we're all going to find out soon, uh, you know. And I think that that um, uh, the way we look at art and the art that's in here is, is very good because um, um, when we did the Fiesta art shows, we didn't have much going on in there at start. It was just the paintings. And then we started putting things on the walls and different things, but I like the way this is set up because there's not much going on. So you can come in and you can concentrate on the pictures and this and that. But naturally for 
the fiesta and that, we kind of go a little haywire on things and do a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff and, and a lot of colors and different things, but but it's nice to come into a gallery where, it, you know, it's a very nice gallery and, and very nice artwork from all the artists that are here. So it's a privilege to work with the, all these artists and the, uh, uh, do the things that we're, we're doing. Um, I was just going <clears> to... <throat> What, the painting, I didn't bring it, but it's called a Contagion. And it's in these, <laughs> these things where a mirror is breaking up. And there's these kind of <laughs> different things going on with these abstract, like the, one looks like a chameleon and another, but they're all abstract in it. I mean, some of my stuff, I don't want to scare anybody. You know, <laughs> the, the stuff I have at home is scary. You know, but, uh, um, uh, a lot of artists look at me now and, and, and they go, man, what, what, is something wrong with you? <laughs> I say, no, nothing's wrong with me, man. I'm just, I'm just putting out things that I, I, I really feel strongly about. Instead of me going out and, and talking all night on something or, or what, or, or all these people that are talking all over the place and doing all this, I put mine down on canvas. And a writing that I did on, on that painting, uh, each one of these pictures that I have has a story behind it. So um, one guy in Missouri said I had to put the, the writings to each one of these and put it out there and stuff. But that, that would go off base for me because I'm right where I want to be as far as doing what I want to do, and I don't want to get distracted on doing other things with that. But the writings I always will do, because um, with that painting, I, I wrote this. Uh, it's called Always Remember. You who see nothing believe there is something. Testing nature or testing faith. No one willing to give in and no one willing to give up. Loved ones left in the dark, hoping a way must be found. A way of knowing, not one of unknowing. Crying voices will be heard. Will you protect these hearts in prayer or find a cure in the lair? Dark nights may show its cold eyes, but always remember the light of the sun is where the truth lies. These are things that I write along with things that I'm painting. And a lot of things I write, I scribble down and I put them and I lose them. And then I find them again and I start putting it again. So all this I, I, I just do with my pictures. So where I'm at right now is where I want to be. I don't really want to uh, get off track from what what I'm doing and uh, just stay with with this and I'm, I'm at peace doing this instead of hey man can you do a portrait for me or hey man can you do this or hey uh, uh, them days for me are over which for some artists it's great it works right up my my family's like that my brother you know he's painting and he's he's selling and you know he's what he wants to do. That's his direction. My direction is this, and I think each artist has their own direction, what they take. It's just that minds are a little. Uh, some of us can get a little more um, uh, where our heads going too too much, like Van Gogh's, too many things, you know. And I try to release some of my paintings, and that's the way I work. But. Um, um, pretty much um, that's the way it is right now. That's um, um, pretty much what I'm about and my paintings are about. And uh, yeah, but I'd like to thank all you guys for coming out tonight and listening. And uh, so hopefully, uh, 
sheds a little light on what I'm about and my paintings and what I do. So, thanks. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Joey? He's deep. I know, I know. You got to sit down. There's a lot going on. Um, we've got a little bit of time, so maybe once we're done sitting, if you want to go back and Joey can talk to you about some of the pieces in front of them if you like. Um, but before you all stand up, I would like to tell you there's a few things going on during this exhibit. Some of you heard me last week. I'll tell you again this week. Um, this coming Sunday, we have a Viva Social Dance Studio in Kansas City, which will be music for a Sunday afternoon. It's dance for a Sunday afternoon. 3 o'clock in the auditorium, live salsa dancing with a little bit of instruction at the end. We'd love to see you. Bring your dancing shoes and your fast feet. Um, we also will have an oral history workshop on the 29th, which is next Wednesday. Donna Ray Pearson, who is our local historian, will do about an hour, hour and a half kind of short workshop about how to uh, gather stories from families and friends, what kind of questions to ask, how to kind of pull those stories out, because what I've been hearing since this exhibit is open is there's so many stories in the community. There are so many stories in each family that where do you start gathering them? How do you start to put them together? How do you start to preserve them as we age out? And so Donna Ray will kind of start that for you and also introduce some of the tools the library has that you can check out to record your own family histories. Uh, we have Jamie Cologne, which has worked a lot with Andy and around the community doing murals in the community. Uh, so Jamie will be here on um, October 7th. Then we have Ballet Folklorical on October 10th. And then it just keeps lots of stuff. So I'm just going to go that far because I'll see you guys in two weeks, hopefully, for Jamie's talk as well. That being said, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being part of the exhibit. Look, enjoy. Any questions? We are all here for you. Thank you so much for coming today. Can I ask a question? Oh, Kim's got a question. You got a question? I have a question. Um, I loved your talk, and I loved your your writing. And um, you mentioned your some of your inspiration comes from Van Gogh and other artists. But are you also inspired by other authors, other particular writers? Writers? <clears throat> yeah. Um, um, Robert Frost, mm. um, John Steinbeck, because my favorite movie is An Old Man Within the Sea. So, um, yeah, everybody thought I was an oddball, too, because I like stuff like that instead of liking, you know, in the body and stuff like that, you know, kind of like. But I like that thing, and I can attribute that to the teachers in the past mm -hmm. that were, I said they were mean, you know, and they were, <laughs> but their way of getting across is so much different from today because um, it helped me along the way. As tough as they were, and, and they mentioned, we read books on, on a, a lot of those, and, and uh, uh, the Christmas Carol, Dickens. Mm -hmm. Those three are probably my favorite ones. Dickens uh, and um, Robert Frost and John Steinbeck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I have one more question. Do you just always have just one artwork going at one time, or do you have multiple works? No, just just one. Yeah, just one. Because if I was to if I was to go two at a time, then I'd really go nuts. <laughs> okay. This story, I wouldn't even be here. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Joey. I got a question. Mr. Rocha, uh, so what do you find more satisfying? Because I know you're a musician. Uh, does music satisfy you just as much as you're doing your art? Or? The, the music? Yeah, what do you find more satisfying to you? Your art or your music? Yeah, yeah. I did forget to mention that. I, um, the band, my band, and with John's band, we've collaborated in different, in music. So jazz music, which I play and I learn that. The understanding of that artwork through my dad listening to Peggy Lee when I go to bed at night when I was a kid listening to a song called if you've ever heard it is that all there is mm -hmm. there's a song called 
and he'd play that all the time, and Dizzy Gillespie, and so I grew up with all that stuff, but my, my music's probably just as important. The, wrong, the way I use my music when I listen to uh, Thomas Newman, uh, John Barry, different music, uh, conductors that I listen to, I'll only listen to that kind of music when I'm painting. And when I go to the garage, it's different, you know, genres of uh, soul, jazz, popular, you know, <coughs> but jazz. So <clears throat> the music inspires me too. When I hear a song, I hear a painting sometimes. Yeah, I'm glad we're cool together. Hand yeah. Hand. So, so I see things like that too. So the art world, all that art just works all in one pot, and then you. you one of them helps one of them out, you know, and, and uh, but just by, you know, that's what I say. The people in, in, in the past and some of that are here are the mentors and the people that helped me in the past were kind of getting around to that, saying that all that combined together helps. It, 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 all, it all helps whatever you're going to do. But a lot of us don't find that. A lot of kids, they, they don't find out what they should have. And man, I was always searching for something. I mean, there's, and so I got into a lot of things and, and maybe too many. But um, no, the, the, the music's real important with the art. I mean, it just goes right together. It's like, a, like making a pot of soup or something. It's, it all gels together, yeah. Joey? Yeah. If I can ask, you know, I have one of your pieces, that great big one that's mm -hmm. uh, kind of a historical piece. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I noticed, you know, like, okay, he does a, a lot of some of this stuff here mm -hmm. is historical yes. in, in nature. Uh, is that a phase that you no longer work in? Because I was wondering, you, know, you keep talking about how, how it makes you feel about different things. With today's world and all the different things that are going on, do you paint at all? Not specifically about an event or, mm -hmm. or anything, but some kind of feeling that is generated in you because of, of activities in our current world. Yeah, well, yeah, in, in, in a way, because at that time, there were things going on about the farm workers, and a lot of people were saying, you know, why have them? Well, we can do it, and they're not going to do that, you know, so I felt real strong about that. So in a period of time, that's why we, we, I say things what I want to feel about the period of time. If there's something like this where I can speak about it and come back to it, that's why I put those pieces in here because I thought they'd do real well in here and take me back to where I was, you know. But yet I don't really do them anymore. But in a way, I still, uh, and believe me, I, I want to because I was thinking of one of doing this one where these ladies are coming out of the field and they're all like this and you can just see the back of them and drawing them and then painting them and on the sun's going down and I already got a writing for it. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So things are kind of uh, piling up one, two, three and stuff where I've already been in that zone mm -hmm. where I'm in a new zone now, you know, and uh, not the twilight zone. Yeah. <laughs> just, just focusing on what I need to do now as a painter, as, you know, doing what I'm doing and not trying to... Um, not trying to, um, I'm doing what, I'm, what, what I want to do, what's, what's here, yeah. yeah, so, but believe me, uh, if, I, if I ever uh, do shows with, and go back to this, uh, which I may get around to doing that one, but I like to use photos in my pictures too when I do a collage, because I want people to see the actual people, mm -hmm. and what, like Zapata and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Cesar Chavez, the walks, and then the black and white pictures with the color paintings that you did and stuff, and collage those together. And I had two of them like that. I have another one. But um, uh, yeah, that's uh, 
uh, don't get me wrong, I still love talking about that. That's that's mm -hmm. pro probably my top subject I can, you know, because I've been with them. I, I've seen the way they work and, and uh, really inspiring in the writings. But I think eventually, you know, but right now, I'm just on this uh, this train and it's taking me to an adventure or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you again.